Alright, so welcome back for another episode. Today I'm going to be doing spare ribs. I've got three racks here. I'm going to be smoking them on the Blaze Kamado. I'm going to be using another twist on the brine. As you've seen the other time, I used pineapple juice. Well, this time I'm using pineapple and cherry juice with a whole host of other ingredients. And we're going to try it out on these spare ribs. We're going to marinate them overnight. And then I got this new little uh, cooker device that we're going to put them onto uh, and see if they work. It's basically like a rack that supposedly holds up to five racks of spare ribs. I didn't have the opportunity, nor do I have that many people coming over for five racks. So we're just doing three. But you're going to get to see that. Let's go ahead. Let's make the brine for this. You ready? Let's go. All right, so everybody knows me, knows that I'm precise with my measurements. I say that, but you know, it's not true. Anyway, I'm gonna say this is probably a full cup, if not a little bit more, of pineapple juice. I'm also gonna stick in what I believe to be uh, either half to three quarters of a cup of this black cherry juice. Next, I'm actually gonna take some of my man's Adam McKenzie's double smoke seasoning. It's got a really nice uh, barbecue flavor to it. So it's gonna do nothing but help with this brine, I'm sure. I might actually use it on turkey too. Uh, I don't like to use salt, uh, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this Tajian. I like that in place of it. Use whatever you want. Uh, next, I'm gonna actually use a couple of tablespoons of some brown sugar. Next, I'm gonna throw in some of this Guste Vite Kentucky Kick, which as you know, is one of my favorites. And then last but not least, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of garlic. So basically, I'm gonna get this all stirred up, get this on the stove top, get it boiling, and then of course, let it cool down, and then we're gonna put it into our rack. All right, now that I've got this brine boiled, a uh, one-way little trip, if you don't know this, probably do, but I just basically use ice cubes after it's boiled and reduced down, and that gets it cool. Of course, it adds a little water to the brine, but <laughs> I'm not really too worried about that. So anyway, I'm just gonna basically pour this brine over these ribs, and it's not gonna be perfect, right, because I can't, uh, not all these ribs are going to be completely submerged, but main thing is I get these majority of it and of course I'm going to cover this up overnight and of course we will be cooking this tomorrow. Definitely look forward to it. It's the cherry pineapple brine. Uh, it's got a lot of different ingredients which hopefully you already seen and like I said I'm definitely looking forward to using that accessory to see if I can cook this many ribs at once on the Blaze Kamado. All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at this barbecue guru rib of rings. We're gonna see if this thing actually can hold the capacity. I'm actually taking out the middle piece, as you can see. There used to be like a little stand here. I'm gonna put in a small six inch ham in there to double smoke that, and then I'm gonna be putting ribs, spare ribs that we uh, brined overnight into the other rings. So let's. All right, so this will be one of the last few times I probably share this. Uh, how I like my prime six charcoal and basically for this cook it's kind of like a little minion method uh, essentially what I'm going to be doing is putting my little charcoal starters right here in the center I got some peach wood in there as well and then basically what I'm going to do is I get these lit is I'm going to put the charcoal chimney over top of these that way obviously the charcoal in the chimney gets lit but then I'm just going to dump it down right here in the center as you can see I've kind of got a little circle if you will a little perimeter going uh, and then once that gets going I'm just gonna dump it right here in the center the thought process is obviously light the center with the charcoal and then the rest of it will spread out so see the prime six charcoals lit I'm just gonna jump this out in here get it spread out and move on, on to the next step so I'd already previously uh, trimmed these for a little bit of squareness not a lot and then uh, remove the membrane before we uh, actually do anything with them of course, as you would know it today, uh, 
I'm going to be using some mustard as a binder. It's your typical binder for spare ribs. I've also used mayonnaise, which I like using. Um, I've also used some other things like hot sauce, which works good. But today we're just going with a general mustard bind, uh, bind, binder. And I got three different seasonings I'll be using uh, to coat each one of these. So let's get to that. As you can see, got those three racks of ribs on there. I'm getting ready to be working on the ham next. We'll get that in there. So basically, we'll be doing a double smoked ham because uh, obviously it was previously smoked. So I'm gonna re-smoke it. And then of course, I got these spare ribs on here, and uh, should be interesting. To see how this turns out. So. Out. We got the smoke rolling, got the ham on there, as well as the spare ribs. So this little device is uh, obviously coming in handy. I can't say I'll be using this all the time, obviously, just because I don't do ribs all the time. Uh, one thing I would say, too, is you could probably get five racks in there, but honestly, I wouldn't. Not if you're going to use the centerpiece, because there's no way, it just restricts the airflow. Uh, I like the fact that I only did three now, because uh, some fact, I keep those on the outer perimeter, get the ham there in the middle. So I guess that's what I would do, but uh, you know, it's still a cool device. Still allows me to get more stuff on here than I normally would be able to, uh, especially with this uh, Blaze Kamado. But like I said, uh, definitely looking forward to seeing how this turns out. So stay tuned. All right, as you can see, we are getting close to being done on this ham, or well, you can't tell, but I can. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this probe out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start glazing this this is a raspberry chipotle peach uh, sauce mixed in with some woodford bourbon so yeah we're gonna glaze it we're gonna glaze this thing right so make sure that we get all this covered you can see those ribs are coming along nicely uh, we still got a ways to go on those but hey i kind of figured that was going to be the case but we want to get this done before all the people get here kind of have it ready so this is where I'm at basting this with some raspberry peach chipotle sauce with bourbon all right so some pros and cons uh, as you can see the ribs are coming along nicely I'm gonna be using my favorite barbecue sauce kakalaki on these ribs we're gonna sauce them all the same that's right uh, but that being said, and it seems like everybody wants to do work when I'm filming content. I don't know if it ever happens to you. If it does, hit, let me know in the comments below. But uh, <laughs> essentially, as you can see, I'm getting these all basted up. But the problem I see with this rack situation with the uh, thing right there, this uh, basically this uh, rib rack, is you can't really... You know, can't really baste these with the barbecue sauces down that rack. Two, I don't like the fact that it's forming kind of a bend to these racks. Uh, and then three, uh, like I said, uh, unless you're, you, you can't, uh, you, you gotta let it roll. Uh, there's no three, two, one in this scenario. You just, I mean, you could do it. You could pull them out of the rack, then wrap them, and then do all the other stuff if you wanted to. But then the problem comes into, at least for the Blaze model, I can't fit all those in here. So, with that being said, I'm going to put these back on here. Hopefully this calms down a little bit, and we'll see how it goes. You can already see, i got plenty of teeth there pulling out already, bone pull with these uh, ribs. Uh, so it's definitely going to come out good, I think. I just, 
I'm not a big fan of the rag. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how the ham turned out. Oh yeah. I think we did pretty good, what do you think? Look at that. Still juiced, juicy and tender on the inside. It's gonna be a nice glaze on the outside, so yeah. I think the family's gonna be happy with this one, for sure. Let's take a little bite. All right, so as you can see, these rack of ribs definitely look good. I went ahead and did wrap these in foil there just last minute, just to kind of get that bone pull, as you can see. Turned out pretty good. Uh, definitely got a nice smoke ring, that's for sure. Uh, so let's put slices up, see what they taste like. Um, they're definitely uh, as tender as I thought they'd be. So, oh wow. I don't know, there's just something about that pineapple brine seems to really make these things moist and tender. I mean, don't get me wrong, spare ribs ain't, are generally speaking moist anyway, but I don't know. I just feel like there's something there with this brine that's really helping uh, make this cook a lot easier. But it turned out really great. Uh, definitely try it out if you want to I'll put the description again of what I did and you can obviously watch the video uh, I'm pretty excited about this and like I said uh, we'll be doing this we sharing this with the family today and hopefully they like it <laughs>